<laughs> let me move back that was a little close if i look up here it's because my computer's behind here so i can like see my reflection that's not important hi guys so today is a little different than what you're probably expecting well then again you saw the title and you're probably expecting something that is what you should be expecting not what i think you're expecting but anyway um, I never ever thought I'd have the courage or capacity to make something like this. But today I woke up and I was like, you know what, seize the day. So here I am about to talk about something that terrifies me with all of you. Zoe made a video a while back, I think it was last year. I don't know, I watch it every day. It all runs together. About dealing with these disorders. and. It was really inspiring to see that somebody that I've looked up to for so long is dealing with the very same thing that I am. So I figured if Zoe can do this and people can make video responses, then I can too. But I guess I should start with what these things are. I mean, everybody has some anxiety and everyone's likely to have one panic attack in their life. But the difference between those people and me is that I have panic disorder where I fear the next attack and that can make it worse and I have them daily on a regular basis and I can't control them. It's a chemical imbalance in my brain. I have low levels of serotonin. That's why it's something I can't really control and it's not something I chose to have. I didn't wake up just one morning and be like, wow, my life's boring. I should have panic attacks. Yeah. I mean, that sounds ridiculous just from me saying it, but you would be surprised how many people think you can just shut it off like a light switch. Turn it off like a light switch. But I'm gonna be serious now. It affects everything I do. And I literally mean everything. From what I wear, to what I can eat, to where I go, to what I do, to my routine. Just the, everything you could possibly think of. And it's all the small things in life that I feel I don't have anymore. I don't have a lot of choices anymore. I don't have a lot of say in what goes on in my life because my brain pretty much rules everything I do. So what do panic attacks feel like? They feel awful. Basically there's a lot of physical symptoms that go along with having a panic attack and a person can have one, two, or all of these symptoms. There are so many. <laughs> so I feel nauseous and my throat closes up until I feel like I'm choking and my mouth gets dry, my face gets really hot, like it feels like I'm burning up, I start scratching my hands. My hands usually look a lot worse than this. Um, right now it's not as bad, but usually there's cuts all over this. I bite my lip, <laughs> not that you needed to know. My heart is beating like this, and this isn't even fast enough. My hand can't move fast enough to demonstrate it. You feel like everything around you is in slow motion. You feel detached from reality, which sounds kind of scary, and it is. I get these hot shivers where it's like I'm cold and I'm shivering, but I'm sweating and I'm hot, and I just want to like get out of wherever I am and run and just get away. You feel really dizzy and you just want to sit down, but you don't want to sit, you want to stand, you want to move around, it's just crazy, everything is going crazy. It's like there's a bunch of little people running around in your brain like hammering and throwing things in the air and everything is going crazy in your brain. Like that one episode of Spongebob where they had the file cabinets and everyone was like, ah, that's what it feels like. And your senses are heightened and everything is loud, everything smells disgusting and you fan yourself you talk to yourself, you do whatever you can because you are panicking. A lot of people say that they feel like they're having a heart attack and some people even go to the hospital. It feels awful. I don't wish it upon anyone and I wish with all my heart that I could take like a little fairy wand and wave it and take all the anxiety and panic disorder from everyone that has it and prevent it from ever coming back to anybody. And this all dates back to the whole caveman thing. If they were faced with a wild boar, then the caveman would be like, okay, I can either fight this wild boar or I can run. That's the feeling I get all the time, all day. I even wake up at night in the middle of a panic attack and then I don't sleep. That's fun. There's a lot of stigma around mental health, mental illness, and that really gets to me. A lot of people think you're a freak or that you're weird or that you should be locked up or that you're crazy or something like that. But that's really not the case. I'm a normal person. I just happen to have two disorders that really, really control my life and really limit what I can do. Um, if you know me, this is probably something you either knew a little bit about or you didn't know at all. So I'm going to talk to you about what's been going on. I've had anxiety since forever. 
um, even when I was this big, <laughs> not literally. The earliest I can remember of having it is I had separation anxiety, so if my parents would leave to go to a party or something, I too much for me to handle. I would cry, I would scream, I would call them every five seconds, and I do mean every five seconds, and no babysitter could help me. It was just a mess, and my parents were afraid to even leave the house. I think it was the idea of another adult figure person coming in and like replacing my parents, but I don't really know. And I've always been afraid of dogs and cats and bugs, so these were just little worries that kind of started you know, impacting the way I did things and what I could do. So my parents noticed and in fourth grade they were like, enough is enough, let's take her somewhere. So I went to therapy and I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell my grandparents, I didn't tell my cousins, I didn't tell my friends. No one knew that I was going there, we did it in secret. So I kept it a secret for a very long time. I've been in and out of therapy with so many therapists since then. My sophomore year, everything fell apart. <laughs> Something caused me to get emetophobia, which is the extreme fear of vomit. And it's pretty much destroyed my life. <laughs> so now, well, basically my junior year was complete awfulness. Um, I was barely in school. I could hardly focus, do anything, leave my house, get out of bed. And that's kind of where I am now. I've since left the school I was at, and I'm in cyber school now. And even that, I'm still having anxiety. I'm still panicking every day. I can barely sleep, I can barely eat, and it's ruining my life. But this isn't supposed to be a sob story. This is just me venting, getting it out there, talking about it because it's good to talk about it, I think. Basically, I'm going through a really, really hard time. And people don't get it. That's the problem. People just don't get it. I mean, I've been bullied. For me, it was just adding to all of the anxiety I was feeling. People would be like, oh, all you do is cry and complain. You're so weird. Why are you always crying? Why are you always afraid of every little thing? There's nothing to be afraid of. Okay, but to me there is. It's real to me. I don't care if it's not real to you. It's real to me. I don't want to cry all the time. Who wants to be sitting crying miserable all the time? That's not a way to live. Who wants to be afraid to leave their house? Who wants to be afraid to go places with their friends? I've never been to a party. I don't go anywhere with my friends, anywhere, and if I do, I only stay for a half an hour, and that's not fun. I didn't choose this. I don't know why society looks at this as something to be ashamed of, and something that's wrong and weird. Just because there's a chemical imbalance in my brain doesn't mean I'm a freak. If they're panicking and they're with you, here's what I can tell you to do. Remind them that you were there. Say, I'm here for you, there's no pressure to be anywhere, you're alright and whatever they ask you to do, you do it. I know Zoe said this in her video and it's so true. If they need water, you get water. If they need a stress ball, you find a stress ball. I don't care where you have to go. But don't leave them alone. Unless they ask you to leave them alone, don't. Because they need you. And I know it's probably beyond your understanding or I don't, I don't even know. But please just be there for them. I don't care if you've never ever talked to them in your life or if you hate them or if you think they're weird, or you disapprove of whatever, be there for them. I'm telling you now, be there for them. Please remove them from whatever is making them anxious. Get them some water, get them whatever they need. Be with them, hold their hand, especially for me so I don't scratch. I like hugs and stuff, but I don't like people touching my face when I panic. Try not to judge, I know it's hard, but if you don't understand something, it doesn't give you the right to judge. I mean, there's a lot more to people than you may first realize. I mean, you see someone, you don't know what they've been through, you don't know what they're dealing with, you don't know what their life is like, and you don't need to add to their stress or their worries or their insecurities because they have enough on their own. Sometimes you can make a huge difference just by showing someone that you're there and that you care. So basically, as of now, I'm not living a normal life. I'm not living the life I want to live. It's not easy. It's not easy to change your mindset, to get better. It's a lot of hard work. You take medication, you go to therapy, you do whatever you can, but it still doesn't always work right away. In fact, it hardly ever works right away. And it's hard to feel okay about yourself, you know? Especially when other people are making you feel so bad about it. I guess it's just important to be considerate of people. You don't know anything about their backstory. You don't, no matter what you think, 
there's always something you're not going to know about that person. After a panic attack, you feel exhausted. Your heart's been beating so fast. You've been sweating. Your digestive system shuts down. You just feel awful. It feels like everything collapsing on you and you can't lift it back up. And you feel kind of depressed and down on yourself for even having an attack. It's like, why did I let this happen? Why am I so weird? What's wrong with me? What have I done to deserve this? But the thing is, if you have any mental illness, it's not your fault. There's something chemically imbalanced in your brain and that's not something you ask for or something you can control you're okay i promise you're okay there are so many other people out there that feel the way you do you're not alone you are not alone and people care about you you're important and just because you have these disorders doesn't mean that you aren't worth everything in the world and that you don't deserve happiness you deserve to be happy you deserve to be loved you deserve to have a good life you deserve to be who you want to be and it's okay. It's okay to have a mental illness. It's okay. I promise. It feels awful. Yes, horrible, terrible, awful, disgusting. I hope no one else ever goes through it. But it's okay. And I don't mean to say, oh, it's normal. You're fine. There's nothing wrong with you. I mean it like you're not a freak. I just, I know what it feels like to feel like you're an alien from another planet and that everyone's like, ooh, she's weird. And I know, I know, it's hard. I've been there. I'm there right now. But I'm also here to say that you're okay and don't let anybody tell you that you need to change yourself or that you're not good enough or that you're a freak because you're not. Having anxiety and panic attacks or really any mental illness just really damages your self-esteem. I don't feel there's anything good about me at all. And that stinks. I think sometimes it helps just to send a text to someone you know is struggling just randomly, anytime, any day, just send them a text and say, hey, how are you feeling? How are you doing? I'm here for you. Even if you don't particularly like that person or you don't usually talk to them, just you don't know what a difference it could make. Because when things get as bad as they are for me, it's just good to be there. It's also really good to be informed. I don't, I don't like using the word hate, but I hate it when people don't understand and you feel like you can't be around them because what if you panic? It's just good to be informed. Even if you don't know someone right now that's panicking or has anxiety, you never know who you're gonna meet and what you're gonna have to help them through. So it's good to research it. There's plenty of websites out there. Just Google anxiety disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, panic attacks or panic disorder, and I guarantee you will find things. Because once you're informed, you are better at helping. Some of you may be very good at helping people without knowing anything about it, but in my opinion, it just helps to be aware. The more people that are aware in the world, the better, because we need to end the stigma that's around mental illnesses. It drives me crazy because People shouldn't be ashamed to ask for help. There are people out there that are struggling, that are afraid to speak up and say, I need help, I need to talk about this. Uh, people are afraid. They're so afraid to tell people and to reach out and to get the help that they deserve. They deserve to be helped. They deserve it. I think the more people that we can get informed, the better, because ignorance really, really doesn't help and it just adds to this discrimination that's against everybody with mental illnesses and it drives me crazy. Sorry I'm getting mad, it just really bothers me. There are charities that are trying to help that like Hope Inside Love and Time for a Change and I'm linking all these charities below and these organizations because they're awesome and it would be great if we could all get involved. Even wear a green bracelet to show your support for mental illness. Um, wear a green shirt, anything you can do, it helps. Also, don't be afraid to start the conversation. If you suspect that somebody in your life is having a problem, whether it be self-harm, an eating disorder, anxiety, panic, depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, you name it, don't be afraid to start the conversation. There are ways to say it, there are ways to reach out, there are ways to help people. And never feel like you aren't good enough or that you can't do anything. Because even the smallest thing can make a world of a difference. You can make a change. Right now I'm telling you, you can do something about this. Also, uh, while everyone does have some extent of anxiety and people often experience one panic attack in their life, it's important to realize that 
feeling nervous before a test or feeling nervous before first date is different than having anxiety. It just bothers me when people are like, oh my gosh, this One Direction music video is giving me anxiety. <laughs> you have no idea. You have no idea what it's like to live like this. You know? I mean, I get it. I do. But it's not something to joke about. It's not something you should just throw around. I don't want to be treated differently for my anxiety. I am still the same person that you thought I was before I told you this. There's nothing different. I'm just not hiding things right now, which is probably better. I don't like when people assume that I'm afraid of everything. I'm not afraid of everything. No. Don't just assume I'm scared of something. I will tell you if I'm afraid of something, but don't assume, oh, I can't do this or I can't have her do that because it's gonna scare her because she has anxiety. No, no, I'm not afraid of everything. Just ask me if you're ever unsure, just ask me if I'm comfortable with it. Don't isolate me. Isolation, not good. Just, you know, work with me instead of against me. And also, I know this is a really hard thing, but don't feel like you have to censor everything you say. I understand there will be slip-ups. People with anxiety have triggers, and people with panic attacks have triggers. We like to avoid those triggers. That's why we tend to stay in our house, especially if you have agoraphobia. But there's no humanly possible way for everyone in the world to censor what they do and what they say. And I understand that. I don't expect people to censor everything they say. But I do expect some amount of respect. I have a metaphobia. It would be nice if you didn't go around saying, oh, I'm gonna throw up, like, don't joke about it, don't bring it up when you know it's gonna hurt me. But if you accidentally say, oh, my stomach hurts, or oh, I feel sick, that's okay. Accidents happen, I understand that. I wish that I could sit here and tell you how to cure all of your problems and get rid of anxiety and panic, but I'm still trying to figure that out myself. Zoe said, just say yes to things, and I can say that that works. When I say yes to things, I feel a lot better. I promise, doing things at your own pace is okay. If you want to do something, do it. Don't let anxiety be like, hey, hey, don't do that, that's not good. No, anxiety is not the boss of you. Panic attacks are not the boss of you. You're the boss of you. So if you want to do something, I say do it. It's okay if you panic. It's okay if you have anxiety. It's okay if you can't stay there for long, but you tried and that's what matters. It's hard, you know? I'm a teenager. I would love to go out and have a party with my friends. I would love to go to sleepovers. I would love to hang out at the mall, go to restaurants, be with my friends. And it's hard because I make excuses like, oh, my grandparents are coming for dinner. I don't know how many times I've used that one. Or I'm just really tired. But I just, I don't want people to think I'm shy or that I hate them or that I'm rude. I think a lot of times I come off as rude because of all the excuses I make. And that's tough, you know? I've lost a lot of friends over this. I pretty much only have one right now. And that's hard. It's hard to deal with. I please, please realize that I don't hate you. I don't want you to hate me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm going through this. It's just this constant cycle. It's it never ending. I never get a break from this, ever. It just affects everything. I'm afraid to wear clothes that I think will jinx my opportunities and I just, every little thing, I analyze it. I, I can't live my own life. You know, that's hard. I've never been to a school dance. Yeah, that might, might seem really insignificant and really unimportant, but when you think about it, some of the best experiences of your life are through high school. What experiences have I had there? Getting bullied, crying, having panic attacks, spending all my time in the counselor's office. Real fun time. I don't want to have to look back on this and be like, what did I do? What was my high school career? What was that? No one wants to live with regrets. No one. So if you're the person I am right now, please get help. Please reach out to people. It's okay. It's okay. You're not a freak. There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's okay. I'm here on the internet telling a bunch of strangers about my problems. That's, it's okay. No one should have to fight this alone. We can't let society view this as something to be ashamed of, something that is wrong. We can't let that happen. We can't let more people suffer in silence. We just can't. I just want things to get better. I don't want people to go through what I went through. It's just important to remember that negativity isn't all there is. 
there is positivity everywhere. You just have to find it. I think staying positive, going in with a positive mindset to things that you're afraid of, that just helps. I went on a plane recently, and I'm not afraid of flying, but I was afraid of somebody getting sick on the plane. So, rather than going onto the plane like, oh my gosh, someone's gonna get sick, I'm gonna panic, and it's gonna be awful, and I can't get out because I'm in the air, I went in thinking, okay, right, I'm going on a plane, someone could get sick, but what's the worst that could happen? I'm going to be okay, I'm going to get from point A to point B, and at the end I'll be able to say, hey, I did it. And guess what? I didn't panic once on the plane. All because I distracted myself, changed my mindset, and went in with a positive attitude. So it is possible to do things that you never expected that you'd be able to do. And I know it's hard to believe that, I know it's hard to see that, I know it's hard to see hope, and I know it's hard to believe in yourself. Trust me, I hardly believe in myself. But the more you face your fears, the more you do things that you never thought you'd be able to do, the easier it gets and the more your confidence grows. And it might take time. It might take a year. It might take two years. It might take longer. But it can't stay bad forever. It just can't. Life never stays one way. Life goes through stages. Life goes through ups and downs. Life's a roller coaster. But at some point, things will get better. Just end the stigma. I mean, if enough people get involved and get informed, I think we can make a difference. That would be amazing. <laughs> Share this video with your friends, your family, just anywhere you can. Ask people to wear green. Have a mental health awareness day at your school. Send a text to somebody you know is struggling. Just do what you can to help. Be informed. Check out some of the links I posted below. And yeah, I hope this made sense. Uh, I just kind of rambled on for about two hours. I love all of you, I really, really do, even if I don't know you, I love you and I'm here for you. And thank you so much for watching, it means a lot. This was so scary for me, like I'm actually really nervous, but I'm glad I did it, finally, after all these years. Um, if you have any questions, just contact me, I'll be here. I have nothing else to do, I don't go to public school anymore. So, stay beautiful you people, bye!